Hey everyone, welcome back to ArtSpark Texas's Texas Story Series. This is where we take a look at art projects that are going on all around our state and in our city. We get ideas, we create projects, uh, we share with one another. Join us each week virtually as we'll be connecting and not letting this pandemic stop us. This week in Texas Stories, we'll be learning about the Cathedral of Junk and we'll be making our very own junk sculpture. In our example project, I'll be showing a hanging windmill sculpture, but I want you to create whatever junk sculpture you feel inspired to make. Now, if you're not familiar with the Cathedral of Junk, it's Vince Hammond's sculpture slash collage slash architecture project that's in South Austin. It's available for tours, you just have to ring Vince, and most of the time he's very willing to show his art. We'll get into that more in class, but we want to take inspiration from his work and create something of our own. The supplies you'll need for this project are junk, but to be more descriptive, let's start with tin cans, wire, chain, and whatever other odds and ends you can find in your junk drawer. Keys, nuts and bolts, bottle caps, aluminum cans. I think you start to get the picture. In this project, we're making a wind chime, so we want things that make noise when they clang against one another. Since we're working with metal, we'll need some tools. A hammer is a great tool to have. Also a set of pliers, needle nose or flat nose pliers, will help us move and manipulate the metal. And I'd recommend an awl, or if you have a screwdriver, this will help us punch holes in the metal. Step one. Before we jump into this project, let's start by watching a short video about the Cathedral of Junk to inspire us. Click in the upper right hand corner of this video on the link and that'll take you to a short video that'll tell you more. Okay, now that you've been inspired, let's get into our project. In step two, you need to collect the junk around your house. We need to find some of these materials. In step three, I want you to think through your design. This could be a sketch on paper or just laying your materials out in front of you. And in step four, we will hammer, twist, and piece together our sculpture one piece at a time. Step two. In step two, we were collecting our materials, and I hope you're able to find all the supplies we talked about earlier. I know that junk is always around until we need it, but I recommend taking a walk even around your neighborhood. Perhaps your neighbors or friends have some junk you could borrow. Also, you can substitute the majority of these supplies with other junk that you find. The wire and chain are mainly just connecting tools. So anything that is long and stringy that we're able to connect one piece to another with will work in that application. Step three, take some time to plan out your wind chime. For me, it worked best to physically lay out my materials out on a table envisioning what was going to happen at the top of the wind chime, the middle of the wind chime, and the bottom. Because this is a vertical sculpture, it works top to bottom in that way. I just wanted to try to find materials that were about the same size and put them on the same level. That way they would clang into one another if the wind blew. Now comes the fun part. Let's put together our sculpture. I started with two cans. I wanna take the lids off of those cans because I wanna keep those lids, we're gonna use those. You can use a pencil or some type of sharp object to take the paper off of your cans. I had some black beans here and some dog food. So I'm recycling or reusing those cans. If you have some older cans that are just junking around, you can use those too. They'd have a nice patina. You could also paint these cans, but I'm going to use them to link together, as you see in my example there. I'm going to mark the cans on each side, uh, kind of um, marking a quarter of the circle that goes around the can. So north, south, east, west, and I'm gonna punch some holes. I recommend using your awl here and lining it up with the marks that you've already made in your can. Go ahead and tap that down with your hammer and you're gonna make a hole on each side of the can here. Four holes all the way around, uh, representing kind of each quarter of the circle of the can. I'm using the piece of wood underneath just because I don't want to damage my table. So if you have a scrap piece of wood, that's great. Also, if you have gloves to protect your hands, that's a smart move as well. I'm going to do the same thing with my lid that I did with the can. 
I'm putting holes kind of in the north, south, east, west quadrants, four all the way around. And you notice how those line up with the can. The trick after that, after we've punched our holes, is to start connecting things. And this is where the wire comes in. Wire can be really good here. Chain can be good. I even have some electrical wiring that I could use as well. Here's that example. All of these cut with your wire cutters and twist with your pliers or um, a lot of thin wires, maybe even cut with scissors. So I could use those to connect them together. I decided on chain because I had a bunch of this extra chain that I haven't used in forever. I don't even know why I bought it. That's why it's kind of junk. I'm using that chain to connect the lids to the can itself. So I start up at the top with my can that has the four holes. I put the chain in those holes and now I can connect other objects to it. Since I'm using the can as kind of a, an upper base, I want things dangling down from the can uh, from all four of those holes. I put my lids through the chain. Sometimes I have to use my pliers to open up the chain a bit more. Once I put it through the hole, I can crimp or kind of pinch the wire around that lid and that'll keep that secure. I also found some keys. What to? I have no clue. Maybe one day I'll find out, but I'll know where they are. They're hanging on my wind chime. Uh, keys make a really fun sound, and if you have a lot of keys, this could make a wonderful wind chime uh, with all sorts of pitches. I recommend just putting the keys about the same level as we talked about earlier, so they'll hit into one another. For one of my larger hanging shapes, I used the lid to a candle jar. I want to show you how I made that. So here's the original candle jar top. You can make this circle into a square by cutting four ways into it and then flattening that with your hammer. This can work for any of your other jars and I really like the sounds that came out of this jar lid. Probably a little more aluminum and less tin so it has a different sound to it. Finally, I used my wire to make a hanging device but a coat hanger could be used here all the same. It actually already has the shape in it, right? Our final product ends up looking something like this. And I have to say, it makes quite nice sound when the wind's going. I haven't painted this, and I think you could certainly finish it with paint. Uh, you could make it longer, adding more lengths of chain, more bits of wire. I really encourage you to create your own. Make it your own. Yours certainly does not have to look like this. Just take some of these ideas and expand on them and make sure to have fun as you're creating. In addition to the project we created, there are loads of great ideas available online. These flower sculptures use recycled aluminum cans. People using junk and recycled materials in all sorts of way to create human forms and animal forms. And also you could recycle or reuse paper products even stilted verticals that kind of stand off the table such as this or perhaps a mobile sculpture that uses wire and paper. The opportunities are endless. Thank you for joining us for today's project. I hope it gave you a new perspective on art making. Don't forget to check us out, ArtSpark Texas, on the link below and we hope to see you next time. Bye. Thank you to our ArtSpark funders, Texas Commission on the Arts, Christopher and Dana Reeves Foundation, St. David's Foundation, Austin Public Library, Cultural Arts City of Austin, and the Donald D. Hamill Foundation.